today I got an awesome video for you. It's an update about the large worm farms. Yes, the biggest worm farms ever. Using compost bins, big ones, to use as worm farms. I've had some ups and downs with these and I'm gonna share exactly what's happened and where they're up to now. Good morning, worm wranglers, and all you organic gardeners out there, and potential micro farmers. I want to show you my large compost bins that I'm using out in the windrows to make compost, breed worms, and do a few other things that I'm considering, maybe even a garden out of one of them. But I think you need to come on the little journey with me outside here to the windrows. Hopefully it's not going to be too windy and we'll be able to get this done. All right, let's go. All right, so over here, through the gate, my friends. So we have, I've got currently four set up, and we've got the sifter here in the way, so I'll just move the sifter now. This is the first one. I'm just give you a look inside, so we sort of like move this out of the way. And I'll let you know why I'm using these different setups as we go through. Hey, look at that. Ooh, look at all those wormies. They're really going hard on that. And so there's some sort of fresh compost in the middle there. And around the outside is horse manure. Now, it's horse manure that doesn't have any bad sort of like nasty um, medicines in it. Now, they're all starting to dive down, these worms, uh, because they don't like the light, right? But if you look, they're pretty thick in there, right? And I've just slowly been releasing them into them when I've been doing my compost bags. And they're starting to breed in there now and lay their eggs. And this is the coolest spot in the yard. And if we dig over here onto... Do we dig over here? I don't know if we can see the light so good. But you can see they're quite, they're quite thick right through this whole garden here now. I like to keep them quite moist. And I put a bit of cardboard over the top or a couple of layers over the top with the horse manure. So we've got the compost in here and then the horse manure on top. And sort of, you know, like a bit of the fresh compost in the middle. And I cover it over with this shade cloth as well. That like to stay nice and dark, right? Now this allows a lot of airflow. But we'll move on to the next worm farm. And we'll keep on discussing how I'm using them, why I'm using them, some of the problems that I've had. So we'll move over to number two now. And you can see here, this one's got the shade cloth on it as well. And it doesn't have uh, any cardboard underneath or newspaper. Now, you don't want the cardboard going right to the edges. You want the airflow in here as much as possible in these big bins. So if we pull that off, you can see there's none on top, see, because it's too much, too much light. But they'll be just under here, I would say. Now, I haven't released as many worms into this one. And so there mightn't be as many worms. There's a lot of little baby worms starting to come up there. So that's cool. I'm digging that and yeah there's just not as many in this farm I need to release more worms into here when I do my next compost run but you know they're, they're in here they're just not as thick as um, the last place that we're in and so we'll move on to the next farm and I think partly because um, yeah partly because I haven't released as many worms in here there just can't be as many in here so I have to release more into this system and I've got layers in here as well, so we've got a bit of shade cloth on top. And then we pull that across, we've got some nice wet cardboard in here, which I like to keep nice and moist. And if you look down between the layers here, you can see some worms, sort of like they'll start bolting in a second. But they like getting into those real moist areas and just, you know, I think they, they like finding those little puddles sometimes too to sort of moist themselves right up. Now we've got some hessian bag here underneath and another layer so you can see them it's starting to bolt down again underneath same deal the compost with the cow manure now the cow manure on tops fairly dry on the sides in the center where there's a bit more moisture and 
again there's a fair few worms here the back one seems to be doing better than the others for some reason I have because I released I released oh there's a cocoon so that's a good sign I want to start seeing cocoons laid into this material now this horse manure probably is still even a little bit fresh it, as it ages a bit it'll get a bit better now you gotta be real careful with horse manure right now when I got this horse manure I found compost worms in it so I was certain that there was no sort of like uh hormones or anything in there like worming tablets that they use for the horses and stuff you know so i'm going to cover that back over again and i water this down with town water that's been sitting in a big bin for about 24 to 48 hours and if we move across here to number four and we'll have a look in here and see how this one's going. I have released quite a lot of worms in this one from memory, but I just don't know how many I've released into each, unfortunately. So the first one that's in the shade is doing um, the best still. Um, if we dig down into here, here we can see quite a few. There's, there's a few worms in here. I still need to build up um, bigger stocks in here. Like You really want to see them like that first worm farm. And so there's a um, night crawler there. And yeah, they're in here. They're, they're, you know, they're fairly, fairly thick. Now I do have a lot of European night crawlers. I know they exploded over the sort of like the winter period. They like that cooler weather. Um, I don't know how they're going to go if we get a pretty hot summer this year, but we'll have to wait and see. And so, yeah, they, you know, you dig through here, uh, they're in here. They're fairly happy. There's quite a lot. So there's enough, there's enough numbers in here to really start breeding and start laying cocoons and start getting numbers up. Um, we'll move on to the, the, the furthest one now. And this basically, this bin, if you look at this bin, it's only just starting to be filled up. And so what I'm doing is I'm actually, as I'm sifting through here, and it's coming out the end, so I'm turning this handle, and it comes out the end out here into a bucket. That's the larger sort of like pieces of material. So if we look in here, it'll be fairly dark in here, but there'll probably be a few worms in here because they, they go through the bucket, they end up through the bucket anyway. And so you can see still some in here now this material it's still fairly warm right and so that's not too bad for them that it doesn't feel overly hot but it's still sort of breaking down it's still got a bit of freshness in it because some of the compost that i bought um recently some of the mushroom that i bought it's it's not as broken down as, as i would like so this one's going to be filled up to about um nearly to the top and then i'm going to cover it with shade cloth around the outside and I'm going to grow some plants out of it. So this is going to be actually like a worm farm garden bed. So I'm going to release worms in there to, you know, move their biology, move the biology through, drop their castings in, and feed uh, the plants. So that's going to be really fun. I'm really looking forward to doing that. Now I did have a problem with these worm farms at one stage, and it wasn't something that I was really ready for. So I'm going to move back over in the garden to have a chat about that with you, because. If you're thinking about starting a big worm farm like that, or using a big compost bin like that, you've got to be really careful. You see, you might want to drill some holes in it if you're not going to leave the lid open. You need a lot of airflow and you need to be turning it over more regularly. See, I use coffee grounds a lot. And coffee grounds can get quite hot. I'm using them from the cafe. A lot of nitrogen, so it really heats up the system. And I did use a different type of compost. I used the one that you get from the, um, they pick up, uh, what do you call it? The councils come and pick them up and stuff. And I used that. And you know what? I think at, when it got about two thirds of the way through its process, it started breaking down and got really gassy. And I noticed that a lot of the worms were trying to escape. And I thought it was only one of the worm farms. And then they were all starting to do it. And I, one day I just left it too long 
and there was a few thousand worms all in the top and all around and I never got to film it unfortunately uh, but it was pretty disgusting and but there was still about half the population so I just emptied out all the worm farms and then put them back into the windrows so I released everything back into the windrows over there and then the populations moved back through and I was able to save them so since then I've left the lids open and I found that I fill them up about two-thirds of the way and so they don't sort of crawl up and out as much and I keep them well fed and if the temperature is right so I'm sorry I shouldn't move through that fence so if the temperature is right for these guys and it's not too dry and they've got their food they're not going to leave and if they do leave around here they just crawl over into this wood mulch back into this compost and back at in the piles or into another farm or something like that so i don't really mind if some of them sort of escape because they just end up back into the system uh, again at the same times but the problem was definitely uh it was an airflow thing and then i hadn't i hadn't actually kept an eye on it enough and probably turned it over so if you're going to do worm farms with these and you're just doing worm farming and composting i would recommend that you have two of them right or even three if you can and you have your fresh compost going in with your carbon and you're mixing that in to the one next to it and then as that's getting two-thirds done or nearly finished you're putting it into the the finishing bin and that's where your worms are you build your stocks up in there they're going to end up in both systems but see what happens is is the really fresh one uh, unless there's some type of bedding for them to go down into and there's a lot of airflow uh, they're not going to be as happy in there so if you have two of them and I know it can be a bit expensive to have two but if you do then that's what I would recommend for having those large bins as worm farms now you can release worms straight into compost like I have them in here in this tumbler here uh, that they're, they're all in there as you can see I've got a big parsley growing out of there, flat leaf parsley at the moment, which is just growing to seed. Beautiful plant. And I haven't turned it for ages because of this plant. Now, they are in there, but there is bedding in there. And then underneath, I've got like another tub where they can sort of crawl up and down and go through. So if they're not happy in there, they can end up in there. Or they, some reason, want to go for a little wander, they end up in there. And then move back up and down into that. Uh, system so really there is sort of two worm farms there right if it's getting too hot or they don't like it they bail and they end up down into the bottom system so something to keep in mind i know this isn't a super duper fancy vlog for you all but i believe it's information packed and it's something that i experienced over time now if you're doing the large windrows like me then you want to have some worm farms like that as well to keep your stocks up so when you're selling your compost or you're moving your compost through out into the garden you're not losing all your worms you know a few worms go out which is fine you know people love worms in their compost bags and it helps them in maybe breed up in their garden if their system's right and if you're releasing it back in your garden you want to have compost worms in for your mulch layers as well so just below in that humus zone which i talk about quite a lot anyway look let me know what you think about this video if you've got any questions down below about these big worm farms and about using compost bins as worm farms i'll do my very best to answer those questions i know there's plenty out you plenty of you guys out there watching this content interested in that stuff there's more content coming up about micro farming small space gardening and worm farming i'm trying to mix them all in together because i believe that they do combine in together very well have a great day happy gardening thanks for all your support love you all and here comes a flexi hand. Shh, make sure you subscribe before you go. And, and watch another video. Bye for now.